All right, everyone, thanks for coming today. We're uh, very excited to have uh, Andre Grekov tell us about uh, some very exciting works on uh, infinite dimensional symmetries in, in in the conformal algebra in higher dimensions. So yeah, whenever you're ready, feel free. Uh, yeah, I'm ready. So yeah, as was introduced, I'll be talking about um, uh, Kapranov's um, higher dimensional universal algebra. I, I mostly focus on 3D case. Um, or, or how you call it, derived conformal algebra. Um, so as you probably all know, the uh, algebra of local conformal symmetries in two dimension is uh, infinite dimensional. Uh, it's Virasor algebra, yes. To D, we have this algebra. Um, And therefore, its representation theory is quite rich. It has uh, uh, infinite dimensional models with uh, singular vectors, and uh, that allows um, significant progress in the study of two dimensional uh, CFTs. Um, basically, we could uh, find the dimensions of operators exactly, um, and um, so on. So, in dimension higher than two, there's algebra is already uh, finite dimensional uh, so we will, because we are only interested in the complexify settings it's basically uh, on dimensions and greater than two uh, it's just s o m plus two c um, and therefore people are mostly using uh, some kind of numerical uh, bootstrap methods um, but I, I, I think it would be nice to have some kind of uh, more analytic results as well. Um, so uh, here today I will be talking about one, so to say, attempt uh, how to um, uh, get some kind of infinite dimensional analog of um, uh, this uh, Virasor algebra high dimension. There are many others actually. Um, but I will talk only about one today. Uh, so, as uh, somewhere around 2021, Kapranov published a paper where uh, he basically extended uh, this finite dimensional symmetry algebra uh, um, by the algebra of deformations of the conformal structure. Uh, and as a result, uh, uh, this answer, this DG algebra, which ties together symmetries and deformations, is uh, stays infinite dimensional for, for all dimensions. Uh, so uh, I'll first give the review of his paper. I think it's very nice um, paper. And then I'll try uh, in uh, dimension three, uh, write it down explicitly in terms of genders and relations. So basically Kapranov's answer is very like abstract uh, and I, <laughs> what I did basically try to play with it in coordinates and uh, see how the accommodation relation looks like. So to get something anal analogous to this, okay? um, it's it just kind of more convenient for me uh, to play with um, explicit formulas. Yeah, and then I'll uh, tell uh, what's, what I wish could be done and what's not done yet in future uh, directions of the Okay. Um, so let us start here using the Ambit Twister space. Uh, so it's a question from uh, um, because everything is complex, it would be question from complex geometry. So it's like a uh, mm, space of uh, new null geodesics uh, in a complex manifold for complex metric G. So let us let me first introduce some definitions and notations to eventually get to the ambitwister space. So let M be 
a complex manifold. Um, of dimension n and then a holomorphic metric on it um, is just a section um, of uh, the symmetric power of the tan cotangent bundle right um, and conformal structure, conformal structure. Uh, is um, an equivalence class of, of matrix. G prime equivalent to lambda G for lambda E sum non-vanishing function. So equivalently we could think about it as holomorphic family of quadratic cone in the uh, tangent space. This is basically cones of null directions. Okay. So an important lemma, which I'm not going to prove, but uh, it's uh, almost uh, as expected. Yeah, that um, for two conformally equivalent metrics. Sorry, um, can you remind us why why uh, no? Uh, no geodesics for cones. I mean, it's not. Uh, uh, it, it's it's not a it's a tangent uh, direction to null geodesics. Yes, they form a cone in a, in a, in a um, in a tangent space. That's what I mean. That that's that, this this cone. Why why it's not a linear space? Why it's a cone? Uh, no, you, if, if you multiply v by lambda, uh, this equation uh, still holds, right? So that's by definition a cone. Oh, right. Okay. Good. 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 Yeah. Oh, every well, point z. Yeah, right? yeah. Right. Right. Thank you. Okay. So for for um, two manifolds uh, m uh, g and m lambda g, um, the um, um, null, ge null geodesics are the same up to reparameterizations. Therefore, the, we expect this the space of this non geodesics to be well defined for fixed conformal structure. Um, and here is how um, uh, it looks like. Uh, let me write a better definition. So we first pick a, a bundle, um, this quadric bundle QTM formed by null directions in the tangent space um, inside projective space of Tm uh, which is a manifold of dimension uh, 2n minus 2 and then um, our null geodesics flows uh, null geodesic flows gives a uh, um, a foliation, one D foliation. Wait, sorry, flows. Um, L of QTM. Yeah, because uh, uh, tangent vectors to null geodesics are null. Um, and the space of leaves 
um, of this variation uh, e is called um, the ambit twister space. So, I mean, there are some questions. When is it even well defined? Um, and Kapranov kind of comment on that, but I, I kind of, uh, I'm not going to touch it anyway, because I'm only interested in example, because we are only interested in Virasora algebra, which basically corresponds to flat space. And there everything will be explicit and well defined. So I will not go into these questions at all here. Yeah. Um, okay, so now essentially, uh, why do we even need it? I mean, I, 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 maybe I should have motivated from the very beginning. So the idea is that um, conformal uh, geometry of M will be related to what's called contact geometry. on L of M. Uh, okay. Uh, uh, to make it more precise, I need to at first uh, review what uh, contact geometry is uh, in the um, holomorphic setting. So, review contact geometry. Okay, so let X be a complex manifold of dimension 2M plus 1. Um, then the contact structure on X um, is a holomorphic um, vector subbundle which is called theta inside the tangent space tangent bundle t of x, t, t of x uh, of rank to n Uh, such that uh, it is maximally non integrable uh, in the following sense. So if we denote by kappa the quotient. One uh, line bundle and consider a trivialization, uh, then uh, this distribution theta will be given by the vanishing of some one form, which is called the contact one form theta form x to kappa uh, and the maximum integrability condition then means that theta wedge d theta wedge d theta m times is no way vanishing and this condition doesn't depend on the trivialization of kappa and it uh, um, basically guarantees that d theta uh, restricted on our distribution uh, is non-degenerate, is well-defined and non-degenerate. Okay, sorry. Um, now we need to define a contact reduction um, it's uh, an analog of the Newtonian reduction, so to say, in, in contact settings. Um, so if you have a smooth 
hypersurface which is transversal to the distribution at every point um, we could define what's called a by characteristic foliation uh, one dimensional foliation uh, whose fibers are given by uh, tangent space to this, this tangent space to leaves given by this uh, kernel so dt is not degenerate restricted on the distribution uh, but uh, when we throw away one more vector um, it's become degenerate again and, and has one dimension kernel so this kernel um, um, is what we need for to build our foliation and um, the space of leaves of this foliation is a new contact manifold of dimension to m minus 1 so dimension drops by 2 as expected and finally we'll need uh, the notion of contact vector fields um, let x sin tx uh, is called contact if it uh, preserves um, the distribution um, theta uh, in local coordinates it would mean that um, the lead derivative of the one form, uh, one form theta, uh, is proportional to itself, and uh, there is like a similar result to symplectic geometry that these vector fields are uniquely, uniquely determined by um, the Hamiltonians, and there is a simple formula for Hamiltonian which we could use. So h is equal to theta of x and it takes values in our sheaf uh, kappa because theta was a kappa valued one form okay and the bracket uh, on the tangent space induces the poisson Jacobi bracket on uh, kappa basically on this on this, uh, on the Hamiltonians on these functions sections of kappa okay so that's the end of the review now in our case uh, what do we have uh, we start we, we how, what what is the contact reduction we want to do uh, perform we start from uh, uh, PETM uh, which is isomorphic to P T star of M uh, uh, where we identify T star of M is TM using the metric the conformal, conformal structure and it has canonical one form yeah, but which was just given in coordinates by uh, pi dxi so and then we perform our contact reduction uh, with respect to um, the null geodesics yeah with respect to the equation um, along the hypersurface determined by the equation uh, cutting out qtm inside ptm um, th th this means that our space L of M uh, will carry um, a canonical contact structure
So PTM, uh, this is the, uh, uh, isn't this uh, like old statement that uh, a classical terrestrial energy sensor is a projected connection on, uh, on TM? Uh, sorry, what could you repeat? So, what, uh, class so, so, uh, I, I, like, so there is this old uh, 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 statement that uh, a stress engine energy tensor uh, in 2D uh, CFT, at least classically, uh, it, is a, it is a projective connection uh, on TM. Is it somehow related to what you're going to say? Uh, mm. Mm, let me think. Yeah, I don't know yet. I mean, we will not have... Um, connection? Yeah, we will not have connection. Yeah. And... Um, yeah, let me think. Wh what will be the... It's hard to tell what, what will be the analog... And even the analogs of energy momentum tensor here. Well, uh, no, uh, yeah, I'm just saying that, you know, if you just look at the projected connection, uh, well, for PTM, then uh, it, it will uh, pretty much look like the uh, stress energy tensor. That's like, mm -hmm. with the Schwartz and stuff. Yeah, yeah, I understand, but it's like, I know it's like in two dimensions, and I don't know how it will look like here. Uh, well, if you just stick in a, a, a complex one-dimensional M. Ah, well, okay, but still, I, I mean, I'll show you, yeah, I'll show you the, what this contraction gives in one dimension, yeah, and okay, then okay, okay. you'll be able to see, I don't know, yeah, we'll get to the example soon, and then okay. I don't want it to become clear. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Uh, let's see. So, essentially, we'll get to the main statement from the Capranos paper, which actually um, it's proven by uh, Cloud uh, Lebron, and it, it was proven in the for, in the global settings, but we only will use it in in the infinitesimal settings. So, um, the statement is that the conformal the, the algebra of conformal killing vector fields on M uh, is equal to um, the, the algebra of this contact uh, vector fields on L of M, which you just hold down. So that's, uh, that's basically uh, the statement which Kapranov had used as a um, starting point of his generalization. Uh, so he noticed that here we have the zero cohomology of some sheaf, and, and he then hypothesized that uh, the full algebra of symmetries and deformations, which he called derived conformal algebra of M, uh, will be then um, the uh, derived functor of global sections. So um, that's uh, uh, his hypothesis and what he did in his paper, he calculated uh, the high homologies of this sheaf and he found that Hi of Lm kappa is equal to zero when i is greater than one uh, the, and equal to, and it's infinite dimensional when i is equal to one in, in dimensions and greater than Two. and equal to uh, yeah and he also proved that uh, h1 um, indeed corresponds to deformations of the conformal structure. Okay, so, so N, N, N is the, uh, what is the complex dimension of M 
Uh, yes, yes. And the dimension of the ambit with space, by the way, as we calculate from contact reduction, will be 2n minus 3. Okay, but now we will only care about um, uh, examples. So I am not going to review the second half of Copernicus paper. Instead, I will just show some examples uh, from here on. So basically, uh, what we need from now on will be only flat space. This m equals to cn. So in this case, um, it's not hard to see that all null geodetics could be obtained by shift from null geodetic passing through point zero. Right? If you have this quadric over zero, all other null geodetics are just shifts. And therefore, if you denote this quadric by qn minus two inside pn minus one, which is p of m, um, like then our ambient twister space is the um, bundle um, is a bundle over Q um, with fibers over each line uh, L uh, being uh, the quotient um, M quotient by L right because uh, uh, moving geodesic in the direction of the geodesic doesn't change it uh, so this means this uh, this is a this actually a, a, a tangent bundle so L of C M is just a total space of the tangent bundle to projective space shifted by minus one restricted to qn minus two uh, because of the uh, thanks to the earlier sequence Right, so because this is the uh, tautological bundle which assigns to each L assigns just L, and therefore this is its quotient as we wanted. Uh, and uh, uh, we could write it down uh, even more explicitly uh, in coordinates um, if we uh, basically denote the. Uh, um, the coordinates in our cn as uh, x x vector x and the directions by p mm. then it would mean that uh, l of cn is just a space of pairs x and p such that P square is equal to zero. It's our quadric, uh, and x is uh, fibered over it um, up to equivalence relation. When x is equivalent to x plus alpha p or some alpha, and p is also projectivized. Okay. Uh, sorry, it doesn't fit on the screen. So this is our um, ambit twister space in 
in this uh, example yes, to equivalent descriptions. Okay, now I'll I'll get to the most to the, the most trivial case is when n equals to two. Then what our quadric is just q zero maybe p zero square plus p one square equals to zero and this could be written like that p plus p minus equal to zero so it's just essentially two points in projective space it's just two points two directions and the fiber over I mean the bundle over two points is a trivial bundle <laughs> trivial one dimensional bundle so L of C two is just the joint union of C1 and C1 and just uh, two copies of C1 here is a picture for it here is this is our quadric of non geodesic passing through zero this is on 2d plane just two of them and all others are just shift of these two here is one family and here is another family so this is our two C1s. So we mutated these ones are given by this C1 and uh, these ones are given by this C1. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> but now, uh, at not, now at least we could see what the um, algebra is, right? Because uh, C1 is one dimensional, so the contact structure is kind of trivial. It's just uh, t equals to dz, uh, where z is coordinate um, on C1. Uh, on, 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 each, on, on each C1 is just dz. Uh, and I haven't told you the exact correspondence between contact fields uh, and the Hamiltonians, but uh, you could uh, check it yourself. That uh, contact vector field is just H dz. So it's, it has a very simple relation to its Hamiltonian and therefore the contact bracket between two uh, sections which is given by is just F dz g minus g dz f. And because f and g, they sit, they take various in the ring of polynomials. This bracket is essentially the uh, the Virasoro bracket without central charge. Uh, it's what's called the V algebra. So essentially, what we reproduced it, these commutation relations. Ln is just minus z n plus one d over dz, and n takes values from minus one to infinity. So it's essentially it's like the positive part of the Virasoro algebra. Um, however, it includes uh, the whole SL two. So it's like slightly more than positive part, <laughs> which has a, which we expect because we we took the whole plane, right? Uh, so we should have have the isom the uh, the global conformal transformation of the whole plane included, and at the same time we we are not allow any uh, singularities. So that's what we got, right? The positive part with SL two C included, but without central charge. Okay, so well, that, but, but like, so this is something from two uh, D CFT, but yes. you started with the C plus, uh, well, uh, yeah, uh, a two dimensional complex plane. Ah, uh, yeah, I know it's kind of confusing. So, uh, essentially, how construction works? Say we start from, it doesn't care about. It, everything is complexified, so we only it only works in, for complexification, and 
um, uh, it just remembers the dimension. Actually, it's not just, I think it's not even complex of kind of algebraic. I mean, Kapranov kind of even writes everywhere AN instead of CN. Um, so uh, you think about that you have conformed transformation of two dimensional space and uh, you complexify it and then you um, basically run all this construction with ambit twister, this complex ambit twister space where it's nice and it works well and then you get in the end complexified uh, conformal symmetry algebra so this is uh, all complexified because of that yeah mm. well yeah i don't know it's not very good answer it's just this how this construction works i don't know um I don't know whether uh, this means there's some yeah, yeah, it, it, it makes sense, yeah. Thank you. Oh, sure. Um, okay, but now I finally get into three-dimensional example. Mm, so 3D example. Uh, can we instead look at the punctured plane? Ah, yeah. Uh, uh, if you wish, I could do it now. Uh, I was planning to say something about it in the end. But okay, let's. Uh... No, I w is what the question is not like a request. I'm asking whether you can do it. Yeah, um, so, but I, I was planning to say it, I say, talk about it. So let's do it then now if you asked. So, yeah, if I just remove uh, a point so from C2, then the question is how do I even define a bit twister space? Now, this is not like geodesically complete manifold. Well, I mean, <laughs> my guess was just to remove all lines passing through zero and if you remove all these two lines uh, you'll get indeed just uh, the union of two c1s with uh, zeros removed and then you'll get uh, indeed already the full Virasora algebra um, so Will be indeed Virasora plus Virasora left, but with central charge equal to zero still. Yeah, so that's uh, yeah. Mm. Uh, but I thought that's what uh, Kapranov did. Uh, they 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 always considered punctured plane, right? So that you can have this um, um, Virasora algebra instead of half of it. Well, I mean, uh, I don't know, maybe, um, I don't remember whether he commented on that or not, but yeah, that uh, uh, probably, yes. Uh, um, I don't know, he wrote his answer for uh, A2, this, uh, but it's, yeah, it's, it's straightforward to see that the mm -hmm. puncture point, it could it can give this, yeah. I would say, uh, well, you're probably right, I don't remember, I think he commented on this somewhere when he was talking about the... Um, um, I find I find algebras. Yeah, so that's um, mm -hmm. yeah. That's I was planning to talk about in, in about it in the end because uh, it's easier to start from the case where you don't have puncture. Yeah. Um, okay. But, uh, so let's then do three D case. So. Now going back to the definition, yeah, it's uh, this bundle. Now our quadric uh, looks like this, right? Just Q one. And now the question is, how do we basically? I would, I would like to write down algebra explicitly, so I want to choose some coordinates. So one idea is to remember that Q1 sits inside P2 and P2 could be covered by standard patches. And in principle that the, my first choice and the algebra looks nicely in these coordinates, but it's not like the optimal choice. Uh, the optimal choice is uh, the opposite. Remember that Q1 itself is isomorphic to P1, which could be covered by um, two patches. Uh, that, that's what essentially means writing Q1 in such form. Mm, and 
and then uh, choosing the reparameterization uh, uh, in terms of uh, one, uh, two projective coordinates on P1. I mean, the coordinates on this P1 I call Z and W. Uh, uh, P1 by Z equals to minus W. That means the, uh, the transition function. And now I could uh, trivialize uh, my bundle because over Z plus I could choose equal to some functions minus basically I could I could choose x plus which is um, uh, to be equal to zero and I could always kill it using this relation um, like this this one And similar of um, over u minus, I could kill x minus. And then I could uh, see how they uh, relate to each other. So the balloon function between them looks like that. Okay, and from here I could write, write, could write down the contact form explicitly and the, the bracket between two functions. Um, let me write it down. Okay, so it looks kind of ugly, uh, but the nice thing is uh, we could check that uh, indeed by hands that S O five algebra is indeed uh, um, uh, appears in the in the global sections. So the standard generators of S O five look like that. Okay, and they, they form the uh, standard um, SO5 algebra with uh, where we choose the metric like this. 
So that's what you wanted, right? Basically, we kind of check Kapranov's result uh, by hands in this in this case. They are this uh, uh, local function. They are actually extends to the global sections of this sheaf kappa. This could be checked by hands. And uh, now, if I write down the commutation relations uh, on like uh, polynomial. Say if we introduce um, the, the, so the bracket looks quite nice. Hey Andy, we, we can hear you, but you probably covered your oh, microphone. I'm sorry. Yeah. Okay, yeah, that's better. I write down the don't remember them by heart. I mean, it's kind of it's kind of still a little bit ugly. I mean, I, I, it's not like it's not as beautiful as the usual Virasor algebra. Yeah, I don't know. I'm not sure people are even interested in right, uh, looking at explicit formulas. I only write it down because like, it feels like a little bit, it's like it's Virasor algebra, right? That these factors are kind of similar, right? But more complicated. Yeah, it involves two numbers now. Mm, there's some similarity and it's like two of them now. I don't know what it means anything, but I'm kind of glad that I was able to write it down. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I'm not sure it's, it's useful. Um, so, yeah. Sorry, I can't do it in my head, but if you turn off one of the parameters or tune the parameters, do you find Virasoro as a subalgebra? Ah, well, actually, I would try. Do you mean like uh, put, say, M, like put them equal to one, right? It's like. Well, sure, it's, yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. I mean, we don't have to, we don't have to do it, but I mean, it just looks like an obvious thing to, to try is like to find Virasoro inside of it, because presumably it must be there right i don't know i mean actually uh, i mean i didn't expect me because it's like because different meaning right uh but um, uh it's algebra i would hope i could find yeah sorry yeah yeah i'm not sure it's even true that we expect to see the resource inside necessarily but if we if we can yeah then uh, yeah it, it means well, I mean, it, it, it might have some interesting interpretation, yeah. Because this is like an algebra of symmetries and deformations of 2D conformal algebra, or 2D conformal structure, and the symmetries are only this, uh, uh, this 10, right, which I wrote down. The specific, uh, which, which are specific uh, examples out of all of this. Mm. Um, yeah, but it's interesting. Maybe it means something actually. I don't know. It's more like it will be like <laughs> this beam uh, uh, as a matter of stellar algebra is appearing in like for the theories. Like, I'm, it's kind of already kind of some kind of trivial phenomenon. So, okay, so the, the last thing. Would you expect a quotient maybe? Um, like, like if you include A2 and A3 or something, then there might be a map on MB twister spaces. So then there's a map on the sheaves of uh, uh homomorphic contact vector fields in the opposite direction uh i see so you're saying that could be that's how it could be proven right if if that if such yeah. yeah i don't know i don't know how like uh, whether it's like this m l m goes to l of m is like functorial in some sense yeah i have never thought about mm -hmm. it like does it preserve like yeah basically it's it, it functorial in the sense that 
maps conform maps m to m go to contact maps right but what yeah, is i mean like if, if you have like an isometric map. embedding or something then it seems like you would have a map on the mb twister spaces or something right uh, every null geodesic in the sub will maybe still give you a null geodesic uh yeah right indeed yeah maybe yeah maybe it's a good idea to try to do this yeah yeah okay so um so that's uh i'm a bit confused uh are you looking to recover a higher weight algebra uh, yeah yeah that's uh, basically i mean what, what, what do you mean by high weight algebra i just don't know uh the any like it's a it's a vector field on, on either CN or puncture to CN. Ah, I see, I see. Well, no, I wasn't sure why. I mean, it's not obvious Holo to me. Holomorphic vector field. Uh, it's not obvious to me that this algebra should be related to to with algebra in high dimensions, right? It's like in two dimensions, we are sort of both central extension of this with algebra, but here, it's like we are looking at specifically this contact vector fields, which are not general vector fields yet. Uh, it's it's sort of an accident of two complex dimensions that conformal structures and holomorphic structures are, or, or sorry, of one complex dimension that conformal structures and holomorphic structures are related the way they are. Um, yeah. These are sort of just derived enhancements of the conformal algebra. Um, so they're, they're sort of like maybe on a different footing than like derived enhancements of uh, like holomorphic vector fields. Um, mm hmm I see. Yeah, I wouldn't expect it. Yeah. Okay, so now what's left? Uh, yeah, I could only comment what happens. Basically, yeah, I calculated the high homologies as well, and uh, I didn't go very far, uh, but um, uh, the, the first non trivial element of H1, which Kapranov calculated, should correspond to the vial tensor, and in 3D it vanishes. So I could only confirm that <laughs> I get the same result. In fact, this basis is very good. I mean, it's uh, uh, it's basically eigenbasis for all our um, uh, Cartan elements. So we, we could calculate the dimensions. So this is our conformal dimension. And this is be like spin, so to say. Right. Yeah, and then I tried uh, to do the same with puncture, and, and what I get that uh, if I puncture, uh, so H zero remains the same. Um, it's by by hard exterior. Mm. Each one also accidentally remains the same. Uh, Uh, but uh, H2 is now non-zero. Uh, but invo involve, involve terms like H0 minus 1 over Z, H minus inverse. So kind of not very nice. I don't know. So, um, um, yeah, and H, H3 is also zero. So I wasn't able to find like the nice central extension yet uh, I, I don't know so basically th there is some kind of algebra with a puncture uh, but uh, mm, I, I don't know the interpretation of h2 is not very clear to me uh, mm, geometrically as mm, as compared to what Kapranov did in, in his paper and I haven't found uh, um, the good central extension yet yeah so it's like work in progress so say i don't know uh, mm. why do you expect to find it in two brackets right you expect to what it should be in, it, the central extension should be in four brackets right? in, in in yeah in, in full yeah what do you mean by full you mean the no uh, like uh, i mean this is the l infinity algebra mm. It's not a binary bracket. It should be in the four bracket, right? 
four bracket and why i mean how how do you know it i mean i i wasn't sure i mean i was just thinking this is some yeah i haven't even talked about dg structure i don't know maybe i'll talk about it in the last two minutes uh but this uh yeah because i i haven't intro even introduced it yet but uh, i thought like uh it's some centric session of dg algebra which could sit in some in some of these degrees i mean uh, I don't even know where it should actually sit. Probably for, in this case, it should probably be in degree three, um, because I'm playing. Yeah, it should be degree three, but it's four brackets. It's some weird shift, but yeah, it should be the bracket that takes in four elements. Uh, the algebra. But why? I mean, how? Like, I only have intuition from physics where it's just uh, the central extension uh, in the OPE of two energy momentum tensors, right? It's kind of. Uh, it starts with some... Yeah, the intuition is coming from the fact that uh, in Feynman diagrams, it's a box diagram. Ah. It's a box diagram that takes in four inputs. I see. Mm. So it's kind of, that means it's not really an algebra. Ah, I see. So, you, so, so you're saying that there is no way I could find within the framework of just DG algebra. So I need to think about DG algebra as a, an example of an infinity algebra. And then I need yes. to extend yeah. the L infinity algebra by the four mm -hmm. yeah. ah okay <laughs> i thought about it <laughs> okay i was doing this means i was doing something stupid yeah <laughs> uh, but there is a, a nice uh, module structure the the h0 part should act on h2 part like the there's a there's a the h h, h it, it, it there's a two brackets that takes in uh, h0 element in h0 and the element in h2 that should give you some element in H2, I think. Uh, kind of yeah, module structure. Yeah, in this picture, of course, basically H0 is just SL, uh, SO5, uh, and it acts both on H1 and H2 with the help of this uh, bracket. Yeah, so that's. Yeah. Other yeah. generators could also be written down. I mean, I just, they're kind of ugly. I mean, so I only wrote the diagonal ones. So, I mean, the cartons, because this these are nice, and the rest are less nice. So it, it, that's just a secondary product when you, what you were talking about, Jing, or? Uh, what, sec what do you mean by secondary mm. product? Like? No, no, that's still a two, pro two product. No, what do you mean secondary? Secondary product is a two product. Yeah, I mean, it just takes two elements and gives away the, the gives back the third one. So this is just, uh, it takes like H0, H1, gives back like H1. Mm, so just. No, never, never mind. Sorry, I, it doesn't, it doesn't matter. It, so we can ask. We can talk more in the discussion. Mm, yeah. Okay. So I don't know. Like, uh, so in principle, that's uh, uh, more than so. I only. I also have like a few comments prepared on the differential, like the Tom Sullivan isomorphism, which basically wasn't. Uh, it was only like um, uh, covered in general in Capranos paper, but I don't know. Like. If anybody's interested or want to listen more, I mean, it's like uh, we are, we, it's like we essentially they <laughs> we run out of time. Uh, so, um, and plus it's might be confusing because it involves like simplicial sets and uh, things like that. I don't know. It's, um, so there, there is a, a DG algebra structure and it could be written down quite easily in this case for, for, for 3D. Uh, I don't know. So it's you decide like. For, what to do next? So we could stop here. Yeah, it's up to you, but but it sounds like everybody's very interested in, or at least I personally am interested in understanding uh, the things we were just discussing about. But if if it's up to you, if, yeah, okay. if you have so two minute thing you want to share, or? yeah, it's uh, it's really pretty short. Uh, yeah, well, but I'm not sure how well I could explain it uh, because so. Uh, if I if I would try to introduce Tom Sullivan construction like rigorously in algebraic in an algebraic setting, it's kind of a little bit confusing. So I'd better give like intuitive like explanation for it, and then I'll show that in our case it's very simple. Uh, it gives very simple results. So essentially, when you talk about simplicial set, simplicial sets, uh, uh, which are basically functors from the simplex category uh, to uh, sets. Right, and the simplex category is just its elements are ordered uh, sequences uh, like that. 
uh, and um, the maps are order, order preserving maps between them. Uh, so essentially this functor, let's say if called x to each natural number, it assigns the set of simplices xn. And uh, the maps between the maps here, uh, they give uh, face and degeneracy maps on simplices, which basically tell us how simplices are glued to each other. Uh, so in our case, we actually studying uh, um, for our functor r gamma. Um, uh, we will pick some. Uh, basically, we need to pick some realization of it. So uh, I'll uh, prefer like Czech homologies. Um, uh, Czech complex, and then we have like face and degeneracy maps here. So this will be our like simplicial set, uh, or better say, it's a kind of co-simplicial probably. But it's not. I don't care about it this much uh, at the moment. Um, so it has uh, this face and degeneracy maps. So now the uh, now there is like an, a general idea how to get a, um, out of sim simplicial uh, algebra how to get a, a DG algebra. Um, so the construction goes as follows. So uh, every simplicial set has. Uh, um, uh, what's called a geometric realization. Mm. Where we basically, uh, which is basically a topological space, a CW complex, uh, which has one n cell for each non degenerate n simplex of x. So it's like uh, exactly what we expect. Um, and uh, the idea of this Tom Sullivan isomorphism that we could consider the DG algebras of differential forms on the standard simplices. Um, oh, sorry. And then we could glue them together along these face maps to get the whole DG algebra. Um, so in our case, for uh, for the um, uh, for Czech complex, we have uh, zero simplices assigned to charts. Uh, one simplices assigned to intersections of charts and uh, two simplices assigned to triple intersections and so on. Uh, but in our case we only need uh, two, two charts we, because we only use two, two maps u plus and u minus and uh, so we have only one, one simplex and uh, therefore the answer should get for the al al algebra element, say A of T. It, it's, it's a differential form with uh, the values in our um, sheaf um, times omega 1, which is essentially just uh, C of Z, the inverse he, he minus tensor C of T dt with additional requirement that uh, A of 0 should uh, belong to kappa U plus restricted to U plus U minus and A of 1 should take values in kappa U minus restricted to U minus U plus wait, well, I changed them for some reason So, yeah, so it's basically uh, very explicit, it's just a differential form in one variable with these additional restrictions on the boundaries. Differential form on, on, on an interval, we, which, 
which has this with with the values in uh, couple and intersections, which restricts to something uh, inside u plus and u minus on the boundaries. Yeah, that's uh, what it is. And now we have a natural DG algebra structure, which is basically uh, a Durham differential of those forms. And the bracket uh, just uh, is taken from here, <laughs> which we had the post and Jacobi bracket. So that's now the full algebra. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I guess that's all. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> guess I should have made some kind of good conclusion, but it was kind of already before. <laughs> Sorry. It's all right. Thank you for the talk. Um, yeah, so the questions question. or comments. Um, maybe you read this last part about this like DG enhancement. Um, uh, so MB twister space is also like it's a complex manifold. Um, instead of using like some check description and then like this dulled Tom thing to get some DG model, is there some like Dolbo model for the cohomology of the sheaf that's like easier to use or something? Ah, I, I don't know. I, I wish I could find this. I mean, I, 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 I don't know. Uh, I thought about it and, and basically maybe, yeah, the, the shift commodity could be calculated using, I don't know, some free resolution of, uh, by resolution, by res using resolution of using free, sh free shifts, right? Or something like that, some kind of projective resolution. Or, I mean, I, I wish I could find something like that, but I don't know. I didn't find anything. So I use a, the old Czech uh, construction, though, which is kind of ugly. Yeah. I wish I've, I know something like, yeah, like you said, that bore resolution. Yeah, it might, might, might make everything more beautiful, indeed. So, because Czech is kind of ugly. Mm. Yeah, probably, yeah, but, but I kind of, okay, yeah. So, Czech plus uh, uh, Tom, Tom Sullivan gives DG algebra, yeah, maybe the Dalbo gives DG algebra right away. Yeah, I wish. Uh, I wish I knew it. I don't know. And plus, there is also a problem which I haven't stated in the beginning uh, that this algebra might be kind of useless, right? Because it's algebra of deformations of conformal structures. So it doesn't really produce word identities in CFT. So it, it, the interpretation of it, the physical interpretation, is not very clear. It might be related to like a DS CFT or something like that. But I don't know. It, so it, it's not clear whether it's still the algebra will be useful. Yeah. Um, can can you scroll back up to your generators and relations, by the way? Um, the, uh, with, uh, um, so so were, were those generators of what 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 cohomological degree were those uh, generators of? Yeah, so that, uh, that's the problem. So how, how I write them here is just the elements inside uh, cup uh, U plus, so to say. Or with, with this here, it's like cup U plus cross U minus. Uh, so that's not really, uh, that's why I, I kind of gloss over it and then in the end try to restore the DG structure. So now we, the, the actual computational energy should be taken should be written down here, right? So uh, inside this A of T, if you expand it, right, uh, in, in terms of these guys, it will have both uh, degree one and degree zero part, and they all just take place in this, take uh, values in this shift. So the bracket, and the bracket came comes from this uh, bracket on this shift. So essentially you uh, need to commute the elements like on this form, uh, having in mind, uh, with the help of the bracket, on the generators which you will take from here. That's, that's the full answer, so to say. This is, by itself, this is not the full answer. It's just like, just uh, the bracket here, right? But the full answer is after you apply the Tom Sullivan isomorphism. Okay, great. Yeah, um, okay. I guess that's all.
Any further oh. questions or comments? All right. Well, thanks a lot for for speaking. And if people do have further questions or comments, they they know where to find Andy. So <laughs> yeah, I'm always getting stuff. <laughs> yeah. And if you don't know where to find him, yes, I know where to find him. So <laughs> okay. Yes. Thanks for. Uh,